what can we do? What can we do about pollution, carbon emissions, waste, climate change? It's the question that inspired us to start Sustainable Westchester. Our goal? Collaboration with local municipalities. It's a sunny day after many days of gray, so... And community-driven, scalable solutions that forge a path to a cleaner environment while controlling costs and delivering financial benefits. Neighborhood by neighborhood, street by street, home by home. From out-of-the-box thinking on renewable energy supply, solar, and geothermal, to partnerships with local businesses to empower drivers with the latest electric car technology, to safer streets and savings through LED streetlights, and gardens that are regenerative and sustainable. So, what can we do? This. Welcome to the 2023 Annual Members Meeting for Sustainable Westchester. I'm Sarah Goddard, the Chair of the Board and a former member of the Rye City Council. I've been a member of this board since the organization's inception in 2015 and until a few months ago was serving as co-chair with Jim Custer. With Executive Director Nina Orville's departure last fall, Jim has agreed to serve as Interim Executive Director until a permanent replacement is hired. A heartfelt thank you to Nina for her many contributions and to Jim for his ready willingness to step in as well as for his capable leadership these past few months. We also have a few departures at the board level. Sustainable Westchester has board term limits and that means that some of our members are rotating off. I'd like to extend our sincere and deepest gratitude to our departing board members, Dan Korost, Dana Levenberg, Peter McCart, and Laura Rossi for their significant and substantial input and dedicated years of service on the board. While replacing these board members is difficult, I'm thrilled to introduce shortly two new board members who will join an already impressive roster of directors. And in a few minutes, Jim and the Sustainable Westchester staff will give you an overview of what to expect in the year ahead. Sustainable Westchester's primary focus continues to be on being a leader in sustainable programming while providing a diverse and broad range of services that benefit our members and the hundreds of thousands of residents in this county. As always, Sustainable Westchester's focus aligns with the goals of the CLCPA and now the IRA to act as a leader in assisting municipalities in achieving these goals. Our programming also places heavy emphasis on assistance related to the clean energy transition while providing particular support to environmental justice communities. And all these programs function to provide technical and financial assistance to our members. And Sustainable Westchester also takes a progressive approach to serve as a role model and innovator in a number of sectors. For instance, you'll hear shortly about the organization's work on building decarbonization and thermal networks. This area of work builds upon Sustainable Westchester's existing decarbonization efforts and positions us to assist munis municipalities with identifying clean thermal energy network solutions, while also yielding benefits for marginalized communities. Sustainable Westchester is also uniquely positioned as a trusted partner and a leader in Westchester. Thanks to its impressive network, the organization provides its members with collaborative prospects and access to the expertise of affiliated organizations. For example, Sustainable Westchester works closely with the Westchester County Office of Economic Development to strengthen local clean energy workforce development. And in its role as consultant, Sustainable Westchester is able to connect members to diverse funding opportunities. These are just some of the many ways that Sustainable Westchester, as a super organization in this county, serves to support and assist members while operating as a lean and responsibly managed organization. Sustainable Westchester has weathered the global challenges and market uncertainty of 2022 
and we remain confident that 2023 will continue to yield positive results for the organization and its members. I'd like to take a moment to thank Jim Custer and his staff for the terrific work on Sustainable Westchester's many programs. We are all in good hands with them. But before we get to Jim and the staff's presentations, we have a little bit of work to do. We have one business item that needs to be completed, which is the vote for the slate of new board members. And we also need to renew the terms of some existing board members. You can find detailed information for the new and returning board members on the Sustainable Westchester website, but I'm going to name everybody briefly here and then we'll move to a vote um, right after. Just a reminder that you'll vote yay or nay in the chat and also only designated municipal representatives or their proxies can vote. So the new board members are Bridget Gibbons, Director of Economic Development for Westchester County and Dane Warren, Attorney for Cy Paget and Rizel. The renewing board members are Sarah Kay, member of the New Rochelle City Council, Sue Fern Tan, product manager at Pre Prescriptive Data, Vanella Yadati, senior manager of strategy at Orsted, and myself. So is there a motion to approve the newly nominated board members and those board members whose terms are renewing for 2023? I'd like to make I'd love motion. to make that motion. Oh, Peter got well, Peter, I think you're second. Very good. I'll All second. right. Terrific. Uh, so remember, yay or nay in the chat and only voting uh, uh, members. Right. Looks like we have a critical mass of yays. And we have 18 yeses, 19. Perfect. perfect. So with that, thank you, members, uh, for your task completed. Uh, so with that, we can move on to the financial presentation. And I would like to introduce our terrific treasurer, Warren Lucas, who along with the finance team and the Sustainable Westchester staff have done a fantastic job this year. Warren. Thanks so much, Sarah. And my name is Warren Lucas. I've been the treasurer for just about a year, just over a year now, and also the supervisor up in the town of North Salem. Uh, I have to thank Tony, uh, the accountant, of course, uh, because she does all the stuff, all the hard stuff day to day. Uh, as you can see, we're looking at the 2021 financials because that was our last uh, audited year on file. And we're currently working with our auditing firm on 2022. As you can see from 2021, uh, we ended 2021 in a strong financial position with program revenues over 1.6 million and, and uh, grant revenues uh, over a half million. And we do appreciate the grants from NYSERDA and the other state organization uh, as they help us drive new programs to hit our New York State uh, CLCPA goals. Over the course of uh, the 2021 year, our change in net assets, which is really one of the things you should be looking at, uh, was uh, really minimal. Uh, it's mostly made up of cash, over 500000 in cash, and the other amounts were accounts receivable because things come in, uh, you know, not immediately from some of the uh, uh, some of the programs and things that we run. And there was a change of only 3% from 934,000 down to 900,000, which really shows the proper fiscal management of the programs and the entire budget and sustainable Westchester. And uh, very much appreciative to Nina and Jim and all the work that they've done. Uh, historically, all of our revenue started out as money really from Westchester Power, as you can imagine, and, and state grants. And what you'll hear as the presentation continues is that uh, is now broadening out to some of the other programs or revenues from different places. Um, which is really um, allows us to more broadly uh, uh, follow the goals for uh, uh, sustainable Westchester. Um, what I'd like to do now is just introduce Jim, Jim Custer. Well, thank you, Warren. Appreciate your uh, oversight of financial matters from the board's perspective. It's really helpful, and um, you're a, a, a really reliable resource for this organization. Uh, and thank you, Sarah, for your opening remarks. Um, now it's my pleasure to kick off the program portion of this meeting, uh, where you'll hear directly from Sustainable Westchester's team members. Uh, in continuing with the theme from our opening video, I wanted first to expand on the question, what can we do? So at Sustainable Westchester, what can we do? Well, first and foremost, we can deliver on our promise to work for the benefit of you, our member municipalities. 
By partnering with your communities through our programs, by making available grants and resources we have access to, and by offering assistance and advice based on expertise that we've developed through eight years of service, we can show that greater positive impact comes from combining our aligned collective interests. What can we do? Well, let's look at what we did in 2022. You'll hear more of the specifics from our program directors, but one of the most important things we did overall in 2022 was to maintain equilibrium and forward momentum in the face of tremendous change. Change came in 2022 from many unexpected external forces, including geopolitical upheaval and extreme volatility in energy markets and financial markets. Change also came from shifts in governmental policies that presented challenges for businesses and organizations like ours working to accelerate the transition to clean energy. On the positive side, change came in the form of major approvals for far-reaching fiscal support from both state and federal sources for fighting the effects of climate change. We spent a lot of time and energy making sure we understand how best to access these resources to help you achieve your clean energy and climate justice goals. Finally, sustainable Westchester itself faced changes in 2022 as economic headwinds spurred us to find new funding sources. We greatly welcome the support, for example, from the Westchester Community Foundation to enable us to deepen our policy practice and from a key individual supporter who helped us kickstart our development program for charitable contributions. We were sad to say goodbye to a few treasured colleagues in 2022, but we also welcomed some wonderful new faces to the team. So what did we do in 2022? Well, we successfully managed our way through tremendous change, like most of you had to do, no doubt. And now what can we do in 2023? Well, I like to think of 2023 as the year of implementation. What we can do, what we must do, is lead efforts in Westchester to implement programs that support New York's newly released Climate Act Scoping Plan. The Scoping Plan is organized to tailor objectives and resources to specific sectors, such as electricity, buildings, transportation, and waste. It also addresses cross-sector themes like land use, climate justice, and climate policy. You'll see in the presentation that follows that sustainable Westchester programs are targeted around these objectives in these sectors and cross-sectors. In sourcing both state and federal funding, we will focus particularly on programs that tap into new resources for disadvantaged communities in our county. They are shouldering more of the burden and negative health effects from greenhouse gas emissions and have suffered from a lag in investment supporting the transition to clean energy. What else can we do in 2023? Well, maybe the question is, what is it that we cannot do? We cannot afford to be asleep at the wheel. We must be ready. The massive wave of funding and the changes in structural incentives recently approved have the potential to lead to real economic transformation in your communities with a multiplier effect. The scoping plan shows in detail that the cost of inaction far outweighs the cost of action by hundreds of millions of dollars. We cannot afford to miss opportunities to implement programs in the fields of clean energy, community distributed generation and energy storage, building decarbonization and new thermal energy networks. These opportunities have the potential to create tens of thousands of high quality jobs in our county. And these new job opportunities will depend on workforce development, which will be a critical area of focus in Westchester so that we are truly ready for this wave of economic stimulus. We continue to update and innovate our programs and in collaboration with you, our member municipalities and county government, and in collaboration with industry partners and other valued local organizations. These partnerships are the keys to building vibrant, resilient, sustainable communities in the face of tremendous change. Now let's hear directly from the Sustainable Westchester team. We've organized the presentation by our programs and cross-sector themes. And following the team member presentations, we'll move the meeting into breakout sessions covering separate topics for further discussion. Here to kick off the presentation on the electricity sector is Dan Welsh, 
Program Director of Westchester Power. Thanks, Jim. We know the transition to clean energy is a huge challenge. That's why we're all here working together on this. Even with efficiency improvements, electricity demand will only get bigger as the electrification of building, transportation, and other sectors proceeds, as you'll hear more about later. It's no surprise that the Climate Act is telling us that we have to upgrade our grid infrastructure. That's transmission, local distribution. We'll need to build renewable generation facilities, and there'll be new technologies that will work for us on the grid edge, distributed energy resources, solar, batteries, and others. As we build and iterate our programming to meet the new challenges, we'll need to recognize and break out of models and practices that have excluded disadvantaged populations, populations of color from the benefits. There's so much in store, so many dollars waiting at the starting gate. One of those changes in particular hints loudly that we should be thinking creatively. The Inflation Reduction Act will allow for the first time nonprofits and government entities to avail themselves of investment tax credits opening the possibility of asset ownership sorry as we direct the benefits as we said more purposefully now let's turn and take a look at the cornerstone of our energy programming 2023 marks seven years for the westchester power program westchester's impact and leadership in creating and refining the cca is evident and the number of communities that have adopted this model as their key to their energy transition work it shows also in market impact CCAs are the largest participant in the voluntary energy, renewable energy market. CCA is the largest point getter for NYSERDA's clean energy community program. And of course, many of your municipalities have taken advantage of the associated in incentives. Launching CCA in a community is instant momentum, significantly reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We know that success built on success. Perhaps most important, the program has been central to raising awareness, knowledge, and engagement about energy and thereby helping to build a kind of human capital of collaboration. Let's take a quick look at 2022. Superlatives are always a little suspect, but 2022 was indeed the most volatile year that we've ever seen, with some of the lowest and highest market pricing. With that background, we managed to get back online with new contracts after several month pauses in both NYSEG and Con Ed. The big news was, of course, the successful launch of the Yonkers program, this makes Yonkers the largest city in the state to implement CCA, and it's a great fit for a community that's demonstrated through its actions that going green is an important part of the fabric and quality of life and expression of the confidence in the future. That expansion brings the total number of communities to 29 and participants to about 150,000 or something around 40% of the county. As we head into 2023, we'll of course continue to apply ourselves to the various aspects of contract administration and engagement. NYSEG and Yonkers run through the end of November and Con Ed through next year. As usual, we have a number of municipalities who are working with us and are at various stages in the process of positioning to launch in their communities. But 2023 will be characterized by the work we do to take what we build to the next level, evolutionary work that will position us to avail of the aforementioned policy and funding and move us closer to our goals. Our focus currently is breaking through the limitations of our contract model, which essentially sets up the ESCO as a gatekeeper or black box. Behind them is a whole world of supply options, the wholesale market. We wanna open the hood on that. We wanna access to the ancillary part of the cost structure so that when we execute a project that results in savings in that area, we can pass them through and thereby fund that project. This is a subset of the larger goal of fully accessing the value in the large purchase volume we have. In order to do that, and to be able to consider some of the asset creation opportunities I spoke of, we're exploring structures that might allow for this and potentially open a path to a public power capacity, which can effectively forward our climate and environmental justice goals. And now let me pass it to Leah Wiegman, Director of Solar Programs, who will fill us in about this important piece of the energy puzzle. So our solar programs go remains being both the matchmaker and attending obstetrician to Westchester County's upcoming baby boom of rapid deployment of solar and energy storage capacity. To meet the huge statewide climate action goals by 2030, Westchester County's share is 500 megawatts of new solar and 300 megawatts of new energy storage. We need to build as much solar in the next seven years as we have in the entire past two decades. That means Westchester County needs to add 35 megawatts of new solar and 35 new megawatts of energy storage every year for the next seven years. How will we facilitate this explosive growth? 
First, we'll help existing property owners learn whether solar or storage is a good fit for their location. Second, we'll help qualified solar and energy storage developers identify valuable project sites from among our property owners. Third, we'll help enroll thousands of residents and businesses in community solar farms. And fourth, we'll prioritize thousands of Westchester's low to moderate income households for enrollment in community solar savings. Looking at 2022, our highlights are considerable. First, we enrolled over 2,600 households and small businesses in community solar projects, including some municipal accounts, which when fully operational could produce $800,000 of total annual savings. But to meet the goals we mentioned above, we need three times that much capacity every year until 2030. Second, we had assisted 13 municipalities in completing community solar campaigns, earning those member municipalities $95,000 in NYSERDA Clean Energy Community Grant. Third, as we wait approval for the pub from the Public Service Commission, we continue preparing for Westchester Power's solar savings offerings, aka the opt-out community solar, and 11 municipalities have already amended their local enabling law to enable that opt-out solar savings offering. And fourth, our municipal solar partnership is one in which we help municipalities and school districts become hosts for community solar projects on their own facilities. Looking ahead, 2023 will be a breakout year. As Dan mentioned, the Westchester Power Program continues to evolve by adding the offering of the opt-out community solar savings. In our municipal solar partnership program, we have two projects under commitment at the moment, with 10 more under review with different municipalities and school districts. And finally, we have two exciting new potential programs that await final funding decisions and processes. First, we will provide technical assistance to Westchester's municipal housing authorities to assess their own sites for solar and energy storage potential. And we will help connect these nonprofits with the appropriate solar developers. Second, we have designed a new countywide potential solarized Westchester program for residential and small commercial owners who want to explore solar for their own roof. In short, 2023 is a great time to relaunch Solarize and to relaunch all these other programs with the exciting new initiatives coming from the Federal Inflation Reduction Act and from New York State. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Lauren Broyce, Director of Energy Smart Homes. Thanks, Leo, and hello, everybody. Um... We are going to be taking a look at buildings. So in New York State, buildings are the leading source of greenhouse gas emissions and co-pollutants, which means that building decarbonization is a critical component of the clean energy transition. Excitingly, the Climate Act lays out goals for reaching 85% building electrification by 2050. Now, within the building sector, Sustainable Westchester offers energy smart homes, grid rewards, and commercial decarbonization programs. Our support can help building owners pursue energy efficiency, electrification, and thermal energy networks to transform buildings and communities. Let's start by taking a look at our residential program. Sustainable Westchester's Energy Smart Homes offers energy efficiency solutions to assist both renters and homeowners with energy upgrades. We share NYSERDA and utility programs and provide resources like our vetted contractor list and incentive information. Over the last two years, 445 jobs were completed across Westchester through the NYSERDA Clean Heating and Cooling Grant. That's 445 homes with either geothermal, air source heat pumps, or insulation added. This is a huge accomplishment, and we're really thankful for all the community partners, our municipal officials and their staff, the contractors, NYSERDA, and all those who came forward to participate. I really want to extend a sincere thank you to the many people on this very call who have been involved. I'm truly grateful. And really take a look at all that we've accomplished together. We offered 27 campaigns, hosted a robust educational webinar series and reached thousands of viewers. We've had personal conversations with over 3000 residents and created homeowner case studies and videos resulting in deeper understanding and awareness of these technologies. These case studies and videos are all available for you to use. Now, in 2023, it's our same mission to reduce carbon emissions from buildings, improve comfort and safety in people's homes. I'm excited to announce that Sustainable Westchester is part of NYSERDA's regional clean energy hubs. This statewide network was established to connect New York State residents with clean energy resources. 
We're funded to operate the hub in Westchester County for four years, and we're working in collaboration with the lead for the Mid-Hudson Region Cornell Cooperative Extension of Dutchess County. Together, we will serve as centers of outreach, awareness, and education to help foster residents' participation in the clean energy transition. The hubs are especially focused on those in underserved or otherwise disadvantaged communities. And we'd love to connect and collaborate with you on the hub. Just tomorrow, Senator Pete Harcum and Assemblyman Chris Burdick are co-hosting a webinar about the inflation reduction tax credits, and we would be happy to model a similar event for your community. Excitingly, there's almost 300 people signed up for that webinar tomorrow, so we're definitely responding to a need. In other news, we're appreciative to our partner installers, and we'll be expanding the list of recommended contractors this spring. Lastly, we continue to collaborate with the Hudson Valley Regional Council on clean energy communities. We've assisted the municipalities in accessing $185,000 in grant funding for their clean heating and cooling campaigns. Okay, now let's take a look at our demand response program, Grid Rewards. Over the coming years, increasing the number of electrified technologies means that demand response will have an important role to play. Many of the people on this call I know have used Grid Rewards, and if you want to share what your Grid Rewards payment, which have, have been issued recently, was, please drop it in the chat and let's see who earned the most cash back for their participation over summer 2022. We launched with Grid Rewards in 2020, and at that time, it was the first residential demand response program in New York State. Grid Rewards is an award-winning app that tells users when and how to reduce energy usage to earn cash payments and lower their Con Ed bill. Residents, businesses, and nonprofits can all utilize Grid Rewards to gain personalized energy insight and build energy literacy to help change behavior. Together, we could take action to reduce electricity at peak demand times to avoid power outages and reduce carbon emissions and prevent pollution in environmental justice communities. In 2022, almost 3,000 customers collectively created a seven megawatt carbon negative virtual power plant with the average user earning more than $100 in cash back. And I can't see the chat right now, but I am gonna check to see what people earned uh, when I am done with this portion of my speech. So in 2023, campaigns completed in partnership with CEC have brought $160,000 in funding to the municipalities and even have helped to involve some of the municipal buildings. This past summer, they enrolled their recreation centers, village halls, fire departments, and libraries. The villages of Hastings and Croton each earned about $1,000 back and the village of Austining earned over $2,500 cash back with grid rewards. If your municipal buildings are not yet enrolled, please connect with me. Other notable highlights from last year included County Executive George Latimer feeding, featuring grid rewards in his weekly address around Earth Day. We hosted a webinar on, on environmental justice impact peaker power plants and Logical Buildings, a parent company of grid rewards was recognized by the New York League of Conservation Voters. Okay, now 2023. We're recruiting municipalities, community groups, houses of worship, and more to join us in running a mini campaign for Earth Day 2023. This is a fairly easy way to encourage your residents or members to get involved with demand response, and there's even a fundraising element of the program. You'll see there's a QR code on the screen, and you can scan that right now to fill out the interest form to join up in the Spring Grid Rewards cohort. The cohort will provide you with marketing materials, volunteer training sessions, and pre-scheduled public webinars. Please come to my breakout room or sign up on the SW website to join our Earth Day campaign. Lastly, in 2023, we'll be seeing the expansion of grid rewards into NYSEC territory when the smart meter installation occurs in the fall. Okay, next up, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Rachel Carpatella, the Director of Commercial Building Decarbonization. Thanks, Lauren. Another sustainable Westchester solution is building decarbonization, commercial properties and networks. We lead the market transformation to fossil fuel free heating and cooling in commercial buildings, replacing antiquated on site combustion with carbon neutral ready technologies like ground source and air source heat pumps. 
Entire neighborhoods and downtowns that currently heat buildings with leaky pipelines of polluting gas now have the opportunity to improve their infrastructure with thermal energy networks that work by utilizing waste heat and naturally occurring heat from the Earth's crust to heat and cool buildings. The result is increased occupant comfort, health, and climate resilience year-round. Thermal energy networks can be privately, publicly, utility, or cooperatively developed and owned. With this in mind, we can work with our members to build coalitions that develop thermal energy networks and transition our fracked gas utility to clean district heating and cooling. As a trusted partner, we connect property developers with resources to shape new construction plans that align with climate goals. The good news is that there, this transition work is widely applicable across building types and industries. There are no building limitations. Any commercial building is a candidate, affordable housing, community centers, healthcare, education, government, and beyond. By showcasing the innovative work of municipal and business leaders who trailblaze Westchester's sustainable future, we foster the green building opportunity of a generation. In 2022, we completed our three-year NYSERDA-funded campaign. Thanks to the partnership of municipal business and industry leaders, we built relationships and grew our resources, which helps us to better serve and connect our municipalities to decision makers, solution providers, and funding opportunities. Sustainable Westchester helped our clients, including the Children's Village, win over $1 million in funding to evaluate the feasibility of, design, and install clean heating and cooling systems. Due to our unique solution agnostic approach and deep knowledge of the current regulatory framework, we were able to match opportunities to our member municipalities, such as Port Chester and North Salem, to guide state and federal grant applications. NYSERDA entrusted us to develop and disseminate critical New York stretch code information to you, and we saw our member municipalities adopt advanced building energy codes. We provided a seat at the table through an education series that included the Conversations in Clean Energy podcast, webinars, and roundtable discussions. Standout events like the La Mora Affordable Housing webinar showcased the first modular passive house all-electric affordable housing project in the region. And finally, we successfully influenced NYSERDA to expand funding eligibility requirements to include municipalities for the study, design, and construction of community heat pump systems. In building on 2022 efforts, in 2023, we will connect municipalities to new available resources. I'm proud to announce our partnership with the Westchester Office of Economic Development to create the Clean Energy Accelerator, which will bolster workforce development to meet market demand. Three years into the gas moratorium, your community can turn your wastewater pipes into a greater infrastructure asset. Use your clean energy community grant funds to initiate a community thermal energy network campaign to heat the streets with untapped energy beneath your feet. We will bring federal funding, including Inflation Reduction Act resources to get tax rebates of up to 50% for geothermal available as a direct payment. We will be your resource for advanced building energy code and compliance information. And excitedly, we will launch a commercial focused grid rewards offering with presentations lined up this spring to all major business and building associations in the county. We know that commercial building sector intersecting solutions such as community solar, electric vehicles, and storage will be more important than ever as we electrify everything with disadvantaged communities and affordable housing centered in our work. Kindly allow me to introduce Michelle Delafontaine, Director of Business Development. Thank you, Rachel. In the transportation sector, the focus will be to support the transition to vehicle and equipment using zero emission technologies to replace those that use gasoline and diesel fuel. The deployment and adoption of zero emission vehicle along with converting and replacing traditional commercial vehicles will be prioritized in disadvantaged communities to bear a disproportionate burden of emissions. While the state 
through the New York Department of Transportation will build out and upgrade EV charging infrastructure on the interstate, we will be on the lookout for access to incentives and funding from the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, which is called the NEVI. The utilities make ready a nice sort of coming block incentives for storage to support the municipalities in expanding in clean transportation. Public-private partnerships and lead in design and deployment of infrastructure for connected solar system, storage, and charging on municipalities' properties will be a critical focus. For Westchester County, the focus of the deployment of light-duty EVs will depend on the availability of level two charging stations around dwellings, mostly for overnight charging because of the better rates. The deployment for heavier transportation will require the availability of level three, also known as DC fast charge, but will eventually be complemented with the coming hydrogen infrastructure. Municipalities will play a major role in expanding the charging infrastructure by providing public space for more charging stations. We are promoting the concept of Sunshine to EV, which is a solar plus storage plus DC fast charge, a system demonstration that will be constructed at our headquarters in Mount Kisco in April. We are also submitting a proposal to Westchester County to apply the same concept for a charging infrastructure at Westchester Airport for the future electric and the hydrogen electric aircraft that are currently being developed. Here are some views of what to expect at our headquarters, the top, and what kind of electric aircraft. Uh, we actually saw landing yesterday at, at Westchester Airport. Thank you again, Rachel. Our transition toward a clean energy future will not be complete unless we make our dependence on fossil fuels obsolete in every sector, including the landscaping sector. We assist municipalities in their clean energy transition of landscaping and maintenance equipment. We provide specifications and comparative information on electrified power equipment and tools and provide best practices education on low impact landscaping methods. Together with our partners, the American Green Zone Alliance, AGZA, and Quiet Communities, we are creating a certified green zone in Pelham Village and educating DPW teams. We see municipalities leading the way and modeling best practices for residents and businesses. In 2023, we will launch the New Rochelle Sustainable Landscaping Project. We hear interest from many municipalities and see more projects ranging from green zones to workshops for professionals and homeowners. We are also hoping to facilitate trade-in programs where old and polluting gas power tools can be brought in in exchange for a new electric tool. Another important sector of the Climate Act is waste or sustainable materials management. The waste management sector includes all aspects of materials management and wastewater treatment. Waste heat from sewer systems can be recovered to heat and cool our buildings. Materials management includes waste reduction, reuse, and recycling, including organics recycling, combustion, and landfilling. Significant opportunities exist in Westchester communities to reduce further or avoid greenhouse gas emissions by improving both materials and materials management practices. Our solution is the Recycle Right app. The Recycle Right program connects local communities that are striving toward impactful, efficient, and cost-effective transition to zero waste through the power of aggregation. We offer an easy to use mobile app and web widget with Westchester and municipality customized features. Recycle Right builds awareness around recycling rules and increases accessibility. By replacing print calendars and aggregating the software subscription, RecycleRight delivers municipal cost savings through an efficient solution. 
We launched the Recycle Right program in 2018 with nine municipalities. Since then, we have doubled the participation, reaching 18 municipalities as of today. The program covers over 270,000 households in Westchester and has immediately saved our municipalities thousands of dollars in annual cost associated with printed and mailing of sanitation brochures. The Recyclopedia has been searched over 400,000 times. And the app has an outstanding 4.8 star rating. We are thankful to all the municipalities who choose to make this service available to their residents year after year. In 2023, we will continue to work towards streamlined communications about sustainable materials management to eliminate one of the biggest barriers towards zero waste. The Waste Wizard, where residents can search for any material and learn the best way to reuse, recycle, or discard it, is an ever-growing resource that we see expanding and becoming more valuable than ever as communities aim to achieve their climate goals. And we see more municipalities choosing to offer this critical service to their residents in the most cost-effective manner through the Sustainable Westchester Aggregated Recycle Right app. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you again, Rachel. In the transition to a clean energy future, we need to invest in research and development in order to realize the New York Climate Action Goals. Innovation will be key. There are a couple of projects BizDev is looking to develop in the next few months. The first one is the potential of an upgrade to the current peak scale wheel operator plant to eliminate <clears throat> sorry, the emissions by capturing the flue gas and processing uh, these gases into valuable products. The other one is the integration downstream of that project of a production of crude hydrocarbon by combining the flue gas content, which is mainly carbon dioxide, with hydrogen. In 2019, Sustainable Westchester put hydrogen on the New York state map by organizing the first roundtable focusing on hydrogen. No resources in the state was then available, and, and we had to call in experts from the Southwest. In 21, we repeat that roundtable, and, and that time, New York State, especially NYSERDA, noticed and reacted by hiring an ombudsman, actually ombudswoman. Today, NYSERDA is leading a seven-state consortium and more than 100 companies to send a proposal to the Department of Energy by April 7, hoping to become one of the six to eight clean hydrogen hubs under the Infrastructure Act. And now to you, Carmen. Carmen is a senior project manager for solar programs. Thank you. Federal and state policies in the electricity, building, transportation, and other sectors in which Sustainable Westchester operates that aim to help us mitigate and adapt to climate change have been evolving rapidly. These policies also impact and will have a long lasting effect on how much we advance toward an equitable and climate just future. To better serve your community's collective sustainability interests, Sustainable Westchester is committed to and must engage in the policy space and environmental justice work. This critical work advances your community's resiliency expanding mitigation of greenhouse gases, participation of disadvantaged communities in program solutions, and financial benefits directed to community members and municipalities. In 2022, Sustainable Westchester began building policy capacity within the organization. We were awarded a two-year grant from the Westchester Community Foundation to develop our capabilities in the policy space. Since then, we have been involved in over 15 major policy development activities, such as submitting comments on the implementation of the Inflation Reduction Act benefits, evaluating statewide community choice aggregation legislation in collaboration with other community choice aggregation administrators of New York, monitoring the progress of the climate scoping plan and disadvantaged communities criteria, conducting a campaign to ask the public service Commission to take action on Con Ed's proposal to replenish their clean heat pump rebate program, and raising awareness about the Environmental Bond Act when it was on the ballot. 
The work in turn has enhanced our planning and strategizing. It has influenced us to diversify our program initiatives, especially in the electricity sector, helped us decide where to focus resources and encouraged us to build relationships with federal, state and local officials, industry leaders and community-based organizations to increase our overall impact. In 2023, Sustainable Westchester will continue to engage and influence policy developments with the end goal of helping your communities be more sustainable. Next, you will hear from Lauren Kroll, Community Energy Advisor of Energy Smart Homes. Thank you so much, Carmen. As captured by Carmen, 2022 continued to be an exciting year for environmental policy with the New York State Environmental Bond Act, a package of $4.2 billion in state-issued bonds for environmental improvements. This legislation is crucial to the execution of the Climate Act, creating 84,000 clean jobs and mandating that 35 to 40 percent of the funding must go towards disadvantaged communities. Sustainable Westchester was an active member of the Bond Act Coalition, which consisted of over 300 member organizations. We distributed leaflets, lawn signs, and other outreach materials to residents, reached thousands of our members through blogs, blog posts and statements of support, and attended a press conference in Peekskill, organized by the fantastic team at Scenic Hudson. We are grateful to have been part of such a dedicated, passionate team of advocates across all sectors for our first foray into on-the-ground policy advocacy. The Bond Act passed with a 59% support rate. We were thrilled to see that Westchester had one of the highest countywide rates of support at 63%, a testament to the power of community organizing in making policy change happen. I'm now going to pass it over to Yasmin Najjar, Program Assistant for Building Decarbonization. Thank you, Lauren. The Climate Act requires that disadvantaged communities receive a minimum of 35% with a goal of 40% of all climate investments in areas of housing, workforce development, pollution reduction, low income energy assistance, transportation and economic development. In 2022, Sustainable Westchester has targeted benefits to disadvantaged communities in several ways by developing our Westchester Power Solar Savings Offering, which provides electric bill savings to households enrolled in the utilities assistance programs, making our program communications available in Spanish, creating internal resources to support programs developing climate justice projects, diversifying our workforce and creating culture committees, including a JEDI committee, utilizing Westchester County Foundation's grant funding to continue our work in priority communities and launching a regional clean energy hubs initiative as Lauren Royce discussed earlier and providing energy education and advocacy through our new Rochelle outreach campaign. In 2023, Sustainable Westchester will continue to advocate for an equitable future and prioritize clean energy benefits for low income and underserved communities. To contextualize Sustainable Westchester's climate justice work, we're going to examine a case study in New Rochelle. This past year, we received a grant from the city to expand awareness about clean energy and its benefits through community-based outreach and support. To do this, Sustainable Westchester elevated its programming outreach in the city with a particular focus on grid rewards. We conducted focused outreach to dozens of religious institutions and building owners and maintained an on-the-ground presence at various community-led events. We also supported the city's environmental efforts by attending monthly calls with the New Rochelle Community Network and meeting with the Environment and Natural Resources Advisory Committee. In the upcoming year, we're aiming to continue these efforts in a more enhanced and diverse manner, focusing specifically on historically underserved communities. We're looking forward to seeing how this model can be translated into partnerships with our other member municipalities to further develop countywide energy literacy. I will now turn it back to Jim, who will wrap up the presentation portion of our meeting. Thank you, Lauren. On behalf of Sustainable Westchester, I want to offer heartfelt thanks to our members, our board of directors, our community partners, our industry partners, our affiliate organizations, and our terrific staff. I hope you all now have an even better understanding of the amazing opportunities we have immediately in front of us to affect change for the better here in Westchester County. What can we do? We can work together, celebrating our interdependence to make sure we create the solutions and access the resources that will enable us to build a truly sustainable Westchester. Thank you. Mm -hmm.